The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 43. NASDAQ is off 40. S&P is down 4.5. Gold contract up $7.70, trading at $12.87 an ounce. We get silver up nine cents, fourteen dollars ninety-seven cents an ounce. Light sweet crude. What happened to crude, man? You know, there's so much going on this morning. Yeah, huh? crude, negative action. Finally, for once. Down a buck forty-five, trading at sixty-three eighty-one. You get notes and bonds higher price. Uh, Ten-year note up nine ticks, one twenty-three twenty-two. Thirty-year bond up a half a point, sixteen ticks, one forty-seven twenty-one. King dollar. King dollar down 189 ticks, trading 97,730. The euro is at 111.54. The yen is trading at 111.5. And, and the pound is at 129 to 1 US dollar. And when that GDP number did come out, if you want to see reversals all over the place, well, you had spikes and reversals, right? Watch this. We take a look at the, we'll start with the uh, tenure, huh? Tenure. Okay. And you're going to see a, a, the tenure gold. Look at this. As well. Show me the spike. I can't see it on the guitar. Seriously. Track. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it comes out. The tenure trades down to 123.09 for a split second and yes. then just pops topside. Yeah. Gold. We go over to the gold contract. We take a look at gold. You're going to see the same setup in gold. <laughs> look at this thing. Gold pops down to. 1276 okay and then goes off like a rocket ship to 1287 yeah and we go back into the dollar index and you're going to see the same type of setup it's pretty wild man i mean uh it, it took the market a split second to basically look at this and um the, the dollar just went the opposite dollar sure, spiked right. higher then gave it up and yeah. we see it sometimes with you know any type of news event right the market will initially react to their first anything which is the headline and um, I was just talking to you before we came on the program, and I think that you'll hear it talked about through analysts throughout the day that there's a lot more in that number than just the 3.2 right. versus 2.3. Right. Um, you know, you had government adding money there, you had exports adding money there, it doesn't point to a domestic economy, and you had inventories adding to the GDP, and inventories isn't, you know, business, right. as in if you're just building inventories, that's not a direct driver of a huge bustling economy. So I think that you saw some of that in that number. Um, and some. how about the chip stocks, man? NVIDIA, oh, yeah. Intel, what's going on? Are we not using chips anymore? So well, watch. If we, if we start, we can, uh, Intel, you know, basically uh, laid it low, man. They're, they're dragging it down. Look at that. Down 10%. Intel closed last night at uh, 57.23, opens up this morning at uh, 52. Yeah. You're, you're at 51.80 so far. The video is um, down like 10% as well. Uh, no, not quite a 10. Okay, uh, what are we looking at? It's down 11 bucks for a 180, so 6%, six, six oh, something yeah, like big, that. Big but big moves, they'll, right? They'll take them all. Wow, and it, it had a little negative action yesterday, too. Yeah, uh, we go to the SMHs. You're going to see the, the SMHs as well as the... Uh, you look at that yesterday. You know, you, you, see, you can see the... Start battling down yesterday. Yeah, right. With volume. Um, can we draw a line from these recent trends? How do we draw a line here? Track, annotate, and uh, annotate. annotate. Yeah. And then I just want to see where they line up. Uh, this guy right here, maybe. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. I just want to see if you connect this guy right to this guy. Where that, where that's going to lead you. Uh, yeah, so. uh, we might have a little bit lower to go before right. we even think about it. Right. I wanted to see if that, it was almost could have lined up perfectly. I was trying to see if, yeah. no, but not And quite. then, you know, so what you also have IYT. Watch this, folks. This is the transports. The transports and the semis look to me like they topped out yesterday. Uh, here's, the, here's the transports. And what you're going to see, this is quite a test. So on Wednesday, transports go to... Two hundred dollars forty-two cents. Yeah. Close at one ninety-nine fifty-three. Have eighty-one million shares. Uh, no, eighty-one thousand shares. You're going into two hundred seventy-one thousand, and you failed. Expansion of volume yesterday. Look at that. Two hundred fifty. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just it cracks me up when they can test to the, sure. to the dollar. And when you're talking about a two hundred number, it's like really, you know. Um, and you know, in the aspect, you had plenty of companies come out. 
with good numbers and they went higher, but you had plenty of companies come out with bad numbers are going lower. So yep. the, the, the battle is out there. Oh, for sure. You know, uh, King Dog out here, Amazon, they come out with big numbers. Um, Pretty muted response. Yeah, traded to 13, uh, 1390, uh, no, 1939 this morning. You're at 1912 right now. Yeah. One of the cool stories I was reading about is that they're doing away with two-day delivery, one-day delivery, I right? I mean, very smart, as in there's a lot of things that um, we've become so accustomed to that we don't want to wait two days. Um, Instant gratification, is yeah. the same. Oh, there you go, right. <laughs> um, and it would make sense. I mean, I was even reading about some of the money that they're spending to make that happen. I'm sure it's not cheap, but it's also not expensive in the terms of the value that it'll provide okay. and the amount of money that they can. I mean, I was seeing, you know, $800 million investment. That's like barely anything when I read that about it in Amazon. You know, especially if you're talking about an $800 million investment to bring one-day delivery to, like, any item that they have out there almost. Um, that's that's heavy. A, a data's heavy. I agree. And you can see they took in uh, $59.7 billion. Now, now, that was, I believe, they were looking for 59.1. I think they took in $600 million okay. more. And uh, 709 to the bottom line. Not bad. Huge, man. <laughs> There's no doubt. Uh, Starbucks, SBUX. Uh, we drinking coffee? They, they, they were, they were, they were up last night. They're down uh, about okay. forty now. Yep. Uh, but that, that was. They did. They were up to. This is a, they were up to. I was gonna say it said fifty-two week today. high even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They were up there. So they the, made the high on the open, like a lot of things, and sold off, I guess. Yep. Yeah. And uh, gold, the GDX uh, bottom line, it's got, it's got a bid, you know. So, for Friday uh, into the weekend, uh, that's a big deal. <laughs> So uh, you get uh, 4.5 million shares. It's going to try to get inside its higher range, which is 2140. You're at 2131 right now. The uh, dollar, of course, is that this is <laughs> this, this broke topside, man. You know, bottom line is that you're right below the, the number in the continuous contract. Watch this. This is going to be wild if, if it fails today because it's now the continuous contract, folks, is different. It's it's it. They string these together. That's that's what it really comes down to. But the number is ninety-seven seven seventy, and you're at ninety-seven seven thirty. You'll see what I'm talking about here, where the breakout is. The breakout, yeah, ninety-seven seven oh five. Okay. And you know we went over it nice. And if we close underneath it, guess what? Then okay, then then you're gonna have a failure. Um, it's gonna be pretty intense though, because yeah. And it could know, be not like a big day, but it's Friday. We got a. Uh, oh. A GDP number that you can kind of interpret a yeah. few different ways. So oh, there no, might be. Um, the, and the currency little... market is a big day, there's no yeah. doubt. Because when you break higher and you broke out of this consolidation for a long period of time, there's no reason you couldn't get follow through. If you don't get follow through, it's going to be like, okay, then the gold market was right, the bond market was right. Because the anomaly was the dollar doesn't go higher like that, and gold doesn't get whacked, and the bonds don't get whacked, you know? So we'll see how this whole baby shakes out. Um, pretty wild, though, man. A lot, lot of moving pieces out there. And, of course, yes. the, with the chips, what you have with the chips, folks, the chips have the capability of bringing the NASDAQ to a lower price. Nothing else seems to bother the NASDAQ or the market in general. But, no, you know what I mean? The, the, the NASDAQ uh, has some action. Let's take a look out here. We get the Dow Industrials right now down 61. NASDAQ is off 38. S&P is off 4. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow. Dow is down 42. You get the Nasdaq off 29. s and P's off one and a half. Let's go over to the oil market. So, CLM9. CLM9. That's quite a move, man. It sure okay, is. So, let's... So, it's 63.41... That didn't move with the GDP. That's just moving, period. Okay, cool. Okay. So I saw a, pres uh, president, uh, a headline about President Trump talking about OPEC needs to bring down prices again. I'm, I'm sure that okay. can only be okay. adding to, yeah. the, uh, to the downside action. Not sure if it's uh, a big factor in it, but it's out there. Yeah, and so you get... You're back to, you know, we, we had broken topside this week yeah. and came right back underneath it. What are the highs there that we just made? Uh, yeah, that one. 66.60. Okay. I mean, look at that. Yeah. $3.30 off the high. Right. That's not, yeah. And if we go over to uh, Exxon, come out with numbers last night. Yeah. They blew it. Um, got that down 2 bucks, trading $80. Chevron, and, I believe, as well, right? Yeah, they did. They, yeah. And, uh, you know, you can see, when you, when you take a look at this, you're going to see that you know, you're coming right into the supply line, this vicious downdraft from, uh, what is that? Uh, yeah, February of 18. Of 18, that's, that's a big number. Chevron, CVG. I believe that was when the market was falling out of bed in 18, it, it right? Is, yeah. yeah. CVX. CVX, thanks. So that's lower. Yeah, open tire though, right? Yeah, and they're having to the fight with uh, Occidental, yeah. or Darko. You know, if you read the ad, there's an article today <laughs> These corporations, man, are something else. They, they just deny everything. There's an article today in the Wall Street Journal, right? So what the article about is, is about this. And when, the, when Chevron came out with the, the bid for Anadarko, this was also in the paper, but it didn't seem like... I, I was saying, well, why did they take the Chevron bid when the Journal had been reporting that uh, Occidental had come in at $7 higher? Okay. Okay. Yep. And prior to that, well, the journal went over the whole story today, and it's unbelievable. The story has to do with was written communications between the CEO of Occidental going into um, Anadarko. 
This went on for two months up until four days before they did the deal with Chevron. Okay, before Andarco did the deal with Chevron. That's right. And they did the deal with Chevron, and they, and they, they put in there a $1 billion breakup fee. Okay. When, if you believe the article, Occident, uh, yeah, Occidental always had a much bigger bid okay. than Chevron. And who pays the breakup fee? Um, Anadarko. Okay. Okay. And then Anadarko uh, is absolutely denying us. <laughs> they, they denying what? That denying they... that uh, Occidental, you know, yeah, they, no, they, they, weren't, they weren't really talking to us. There was nothing really okay. solid. Okay. It was like I'm reading this and saying, this is unbelievable. So the journalist showing, oh, we got emails, we got, it, it's just. It's, Why would it, they put a break, a billion dollar breakup? Why would Anadarko allow a billion dollar breakup fee to be in that deal. That's what that's what the okay. journal's writing. That's yeah. a, that's exactly what that that's that's part of that deal. Like what is this? Why yeah. why would you do something like this? Right? Right? No, we'll find out. You know, I'm and sure. so there this, you know, the, yeah. then they then they show that uh it's possible that Chevron would be a better mix of them cuz they're a much bigger company, and if something happens, sure. you know, that... And I remember that, when it that, first came out, right? That, I was saying, that, you know, that could be the deal, but yeah. the whole deniability is like the wild thing. Yeah. No, no, hey. I don't... No, that that was that didn't come down. You're talking about, uh, what was the final price tag? Billions. 33 to $38 billion, I think. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. quite a, a game of high-stakes poker they're playing, yeah. as in you yeah. better not believe everything, because it's a negotiation up until... The day it's done. Until it's, uh, until yeah. it's sold. Yeah, there's, Forty there's no billion dollar poker game going on yeah. there. See who let's, holds let's the, the cards. Now A N A D maybe will get you there. A N A D. There we go. There we go. Let's see what's there. Because now they 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 ended this with the they thought, they thought that Chevron's going to have to come in bigger now. Okay, right. right. You know, yeah. you know, because the. the, the because Occidental came in with more cash, too. And it's not that they both had... It was a cash stock deal, but the Anadarko did come in with more cash now. I mean... Uh, Occidental. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah? You're at 71.52. When this started two weeks ago, you're at 46 bucks. How's that, huh? If, if Chevron and Occidental are in a big poker game, man, Anadarko's the house just collecting. <laughs> right? I mean, it's so like... True. they're in They're in quite a spot. So that's that's a market cap of thirty five billion. Yeah, and that's where so I, I believe the first bid was thirty three. I believe the second one was thirty eight. Okay. So you're sitting right in the middle. They now know it's going to be more than thirty three, um, and they're saying, "Ah, oh, we'll so this. thirty. What do we just say? Thirty? How much? Thirty five point eight, I believe, or okay. something. Yeah. O X Y. Let me see. I want to see thirty five. So let's see what Occidental is. Okay, that's only 45. Yep. And then watch, yeah, this is going to be... Yeah, yeah, they're they're going to be far above this 45. This is what it is, yeah. Yeah, 223. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's what you're dealing with. Sure, really, right. right? That's, I, that's, I, would, I would agree. Yeah, that's... And there's even probably, there's probably even more than that is in way maybe maybe they think the management team because they're such a bigger company can right. do a better job of integrating those two companies or something right. like that. I'm, right. there's, I imagine there's a lot of things at play when you talk about more, you know, a, a quarter trillion dollar company taking over a company valued at 40 billion. Speaking of valuations, you see Uber? Not, yes. Not quite the unicorn they thought it was going to be. No, 90. Like an 80. 90, 90 bill, 80 to 90 80, billion. Yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah. Um, I mean, the numbers before Lyft came out was that Uber was going to be 120 to 140 billion for valuation. Uh, you be. You be. I know, I know you're a Lyft fan. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get you. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So they're gonna. They, what happens, folks, is that the S1 is out today. Yes. They're gonna be on the road, and I suspect they, they're gonna try to get this done by next Friday or Monday at the latest. I know? would not let it hang, especially when it seems like the longer it waits, the valuation just keeps going down. Totally. Um, yeah. So see, it's as high as 84. Um, that's the high end. Um, so wow. they're they're offering only 180 million shares between 44 and 50 bucks. Um, let's get down here. So yeah, at the top of the range, that's talking about 84 billion. That's okay. that's a low top end of that range, man. And um, let's see. Yeah. So nonetheless, we'll we'll hear about this. No, you see this right here. PayPal Holdings has agreed to buy 500 million of Uber stock at the IPO price and apply replacement. Okay. The investment's part of a deal to extend the payment company sponsorship partnership with Uber. Sure. Yeah. That that has more than to do. 
more than just to do with buying the shares, right? right. They're making sure they're securing themselves as right. being a payment provider in some capacity. Yes. You're probably going to be able to tie your PayPal account to your Uber account. Yeah. Um, probably a smart move, PayPal. That stock oh, yeah. is just a rocket ship, man. Yeah. These, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt. So let's see. At the low end of the range, Uber's market valuation would just be $74 billion below this latest private funding yeah. round. Yeah, right. I mean, that was at 76. If you had said six weeks ago that Uber's going to go public at a valuation of $74 billion, people would go, what the heck's going to happen over the next six weeks, man? Is the market going to go to the floor? Yeah. So you get $15 billion for Lyft. Yeah. Lyft That's took everyone to the clean. quite a chart. Yeah. It's $72 to 56 For sure. 28 days. Watch out. Stay right there, folks. Tell me I come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is uh, down uh, four, only four. NASDAQ down 26. S&P is up one and a half. Let's go to Steve in Houston. Hey, Steve, what's going on? How are you doing? More than great, Steve? man. Yourself? Good. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks. Hey, I, I wanted to mention something about this uh, Anadarko um, and uh, Chevron merger. What yes. People are forgetting that there's a tremendous amount of acreage out there that are 
that is work that is more efficient when you combine those two companies in with Occidental because of the horizontal drilling and where they're located. It makes more sense economic wise uh, to look at uh, where their acreage is and where they where they're complementary to it. I see. Um, yeah, in correlation with each other. So you're saying Anadarko has closer reserves to Chevron than uh, Occidental, right? Is that what we're talking? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And it makes more sense from an economic standpoint because you're going down and then drilling horizontally. Yes. That you're getting a lot more acreage that is next to each other so they can be more efficient on the particular wells that they're drilling. Nice. Uh, it just makes a heck of a lot more sense than Occidental. Pretty cool. That's why you're probably going to see Chevron come back hard, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. It, it, it's it's totally. Uh, I mean, that's where it's at. I mean, it's it's one thing. It, the old ways is just a vertical. Uh, well, now it's all horizontal, and you've got to get enough acreage put together to make it worthwhile and sensible, and it eliminates a lot of overhead if you're combining those two companies from, um, you know. Uh, you know, from a, you don't have as many people to, to deal with uh, in in that type of thing, and you've got uh, uh, economies of scale is what they call it sure. by doing it that way. And then you've got, you know, the, the same engineers could be doing it over, you know, rather than uh, two different companies in the same area just have one company. And uh, it just makes more sense uh, economically for that, that to work. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, it's amazing is that um, as you're talking about the, the, the horizontal drilling, I just took oil and I, I put oil up on a 30-year basis. I was in Alaska. I had actually offices in Alaska uh, when oil got down to this $10 level. And yeah. that's where horizontal drilling started. And I remember sitting, eating breakfast, like reading this and saying, wow, this is going to be pretty cool how this, how this works. Yeah. So it, what's intriguing here, folks, is that I, I forgot that it actually goes back that far. Now, it certainly didn't get the, the kick out of the deal until about 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, when they basically realized that, you know, hey, guess what? You can do this everywhere. They, they were doing it basically up there. You know, that's where it started. But it's so intriguing, man, because... You know, whether it's Pennsylvania, you know, the Permian Basin in general, or then um, in Texas, they thought all those wells in Texas were done. It's like, yeah, they're done well, all right. It, it, they're going to make billionaires Tom, out of the Tom, next five generations. <laughs> Tom, that's exactly it. It's the technology of the drilling that has escalated so much to where they're being, being able to be so precise and out of one well... They can they can dr one uh, pad they can drill you know six seven eight from that that's amazing and then the costs uh, the costs are, are just so much better that way and the technology has improved so much I mean that's the engineering aspect of it and so right. that's why we're at, why we're at the level we're at it's uh, pretty cool it, it's it, it's truly amazing and it's wonderful from that standpoint and it's the way they're doing it, it's it, it's environmentally um, a sound doing it this way, and yeah. it's a good way of doing it. So it, now, now it's did all you, improving. Did, did you grow up in Houston? No, I grew up in Ohio originally, but I've been down here for 40 years. So That's so cool. Because what happens, folks, is that so the way... And, and we specialize. We, 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 had, we had cheap tickets going all over the country, but I had all those oil companies in Alaska... And that's why I said oh, yeah. I had so many customers in Houston because what happens, folks, is two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off, and it was a great business, man. I mean, I had – forget it, man. It was just – and I, I got to learn not about the business in general but about the economy in general because it was so dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Sure. These guys a – Absolutely. Yeah. They're, and it, there's wonderful people in that industry, and they are hard workers. Oh, yeah. And they – provide great services and it's it's really it's just a, a phenomenal part of this economy that they, they got the technology behind it like they do yeah and it's real work man it's, it's actually dangerous work I mean but it, it, depending what time, well, it's you know I, I I got to see some of them going out into those rigs a few times it's like man this is pretty intense you know what I thought was so cool man because I got to learn to know a lot of these guys over the course of time, because I did this, oh, like seven years. Um, 
And what ended up happening, because they had the time, they'd, they'd get some of that bread, not all of them, but I bet about a third of them had another business. They get the bread, they start another small business going. Sure. Um, so it was pretty cool, man, just watching how money transfers, you know. And well, and that's true. And th this is kind of entering, we go through these phases, and this is entering into a phase where you've got these majors that their economies of scale are coming into play to where it now starts to make sense to buy these smaller independents or guys like Anna Darko. That's not a small one, but you're going to see more consolidation in all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, it's it, what's amazing is that we have so much oil, right? I mean, it's like, okay, you know. But I, it's the technology that does it. That does if it. it isn't that technology, you would not have that oil. And this is this this oil does play out pretty quick, so it's not like uh, it's there forever. Uh, you've got to do a, a lot of drilling. Okay. Yeah, pretty cool, man. You got to love Alrighty. it. Steve, thanks Thank for the you. update, man. Bye. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. Yeah. The you know what they had they had in the uh, the journal this morning too the average pay folks for these oil works one hundred seventy six thousand okay yeah um, you know big money but how high up the chain does that go it said the medium that's that was for the whole company or for yes yeah, for the whole company for what kind okay yeah you know me I love details I'm just like yeah. what company is I've never heard of a, a company that pays median one seventy six thousand well, to a worker there you go well, as soon we'll, as we get off we'll you, can, find it. you can pull up that article <laughs> as soon as we get off the air we'll figure it out all right <laughs> It's, 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 I, it, it, it I've is. only heard of Facebook, uh, the likes, uh, I'm sure you're, oh. because I know that, and, it, and it's because of exactly what you said, man, it is hard work, it's definitely dangerous if you're actually out there on those rigs, um, so they deserve every penny of that for yeah. sure. I'm just so what, what's happened, what you're, what you're going to see, folks, now this is pretty cool, see what you're going to see here, the, the, what had happened is that the SEC put in a new rule last year sometime so when they're when these companies are giving their numbers out they also have to give out their the medium for their workforce that's is what that the sec or is that a european rule that they're doing is it sec okay it's the sec so is it? Okay. um bottom line is that that's where these numbers are coming from i think um, that might be a european rule just because remember the europeans are very concerned about like ceo pay to median average pay so i think the companies do business, business overseas as a result have to disclose ceo to median worker pay ratios um as part of the european regulations european union brussels brussels want to know everything well just like those mergers right they need to protect jobs they they are that's why i say that's stay right there folks tell me i come right back If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Let me look at Bitcoin first. This is, sure. this is a good story, though. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Don't, okay. Let me get another screen for you. We'll go for this one. Go for it. Okay, so Bitcoin. XBT, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. XBT. Yeah, the story out here, we're talking about Bitfinex. Um, there's a little drop. Uh, we made it up to 5,500, but you're going to see some volatility here. What's the low there? 49.83. Yeah. Um, Almost a 10% haircut from 5,500. Okay, so now the story. And the story goes this back is crazy, to... Man. Where yeah. were we? Did we jump around? No, right there. Uh, so cryptocurrency shed $10 billion in an hour on worries over stablecoin, quote-unquote, Tether. Yeah. So if you remember, Tether was supposed to be something you could take your money out of crypto, put it in a, quote-unquote, crypto but it was tied to the value of a dollar. So you're basically just putting it into cash, was the theory. Right. Uh, there was always speculation, though, that those reserves were not there to meet. The, the Tether was saying, no, no, we have reserves of a dollar in the bank show anyone. for every dollar that's supposed to be in Tether. Right. Well, it comes out that Bitfinex, I guess it's saying alleges, we'll see what, uh, that they used $700 million from those Tether's cash reserves to cover an $850 million loss. And I believe that's one of those where maybe it was a hacking, maybe it was a whatever it was, right? They lost that type of value. And uh, instead of ex disclo disclosing that, um, yeah, so now questions have arisen, and this is talking about... So that must about, be New York's Attorney General. That's his top lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. yep. Um, so let's see, it gets in. So they're falling amid um, reignited regulatory worries around questions over the legit legitimacy of so-called stablecoin tether. Uh, the entire market, so everything kind of tanked all at once, shedding $10 billion. That's after, as you said, New York Attorney General accusing um, the operator of Bitfinex and, and Tether, issuer Tether Limited, of hiding $850 million <laughs> loss. Yeah, so they're saying that they basically raided those reserves to make up for the loss of client and corporate funds to the tune of $850 million. Tether is supposed to be pegged to the U.S. dollar, that's what they say, otherwise known as a stable coin, um, but worries have been raised. We've talked about it here. Yeah. And Paul from Nevada, right, talking about just um, they don't show the reserves. Yeah, don't worry. We got all that money in the bank to back it up, but we're not going to show you. And uh, you better have, you know, your... your uh, you better have those spikes on your shoulders, That's crazy, man. man. Look at that. The Attorney General's office said Thursday that Bitfinex handed $850 million to a Panama entity called Crypto Capital without disclosing it to investors. Executives said Bitfinex and Tether then allegedly engaged in a series of conflicted corporate transactions where Bitfinex gave itself access to Tether's cash. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not disclosed to investors, of course. Uh, cash reserves as basically a slush fund. And the whole point of that was supposed to be that, you know, it's like not escrow, right? But no, 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 we're not taking that as operating income. We have reserves to back it up. 
No, they don't. They just raid that anytime they need more money. Um, so let's see their response. Said in the response that the Attorney General's court filings were written in bad faith, riddled with false assertions. It flatly denied the $850 million loss, stating the funds were not lost, but have been, in fact, seized and safeguarded. I, I am very suspect of that statement. Um, yeah, so those markets getting hit pretty hard, as you'd expect when you hear another scandal, right? And they just kind of break down that wide tethers one of the most notable stables because it's meant to be back one by one with the U.S. dollar to provide a stable value. You know, you want to get your money out of Bitcoin. Sometimes it's really hard to take it from Bitcoin and actually put it back into literal U.S. dollars. So the theory being you can keep it on those crypto exchanges, but take it out of the crypto market. Not so much, folks. Not so much. Uh, and we were jumping around as well. So one of those articles there we were, so they really are raking it in, man. In terms of oil refiners, 200,000 almost for the median worker. Um, oil and grass drillers refiners had some of the highest paid median workers in the energy and utility sector, in, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal. Pretty, pretty remarkable numbers, and uh, they deserve it, man, for sure. That is quite, yeah, you're talking about highly skilled labor, for sure, whether you're talking about, you know, geologists, right, um, let alone the, the manual labor of yeah. skilled labor out there, right. too. There's, there's, right. you're, you're a skilled laborer if you're doing that, for sure. Big time. Yeah. So let's go take a look at some of the uh, higher volume equities out here. We'll see if we, we get any volume in this market out here today. Uh, Ford. Let's talk about Ford, actually, because yeah. uh, they're facing a criminal investigation, but that really? doesn't... Yeah, they sure are, over the um, emissions. Seems okay. to be a, a nagging factor on that, but it's nonetheless... Look yeah. at that thing. It's up 10%. And they came out with numbers, correct? Yeah. So um, yep. They came right out here. with more than just a criminal investigation. So there... Okay, so you launch the consolidation. Let's see. They're saying this thing can get up to $11. Let's see what they have to say here. Oh. <laughs> Let's, yeah, that's the top one, right? Bad, bad news is good for your I stock know, these days. Right? <laughs> as long as you're selling a lot of cars, it doesn't mean if yeah. it doesn't matter if you're lying about emissions, I guess. Um, so, let's see. They beat on earnings per share, they're saying. They beat on revenue. That's really what's driving this. Um, there could be more upside to estimates for the remainder of the year. Ford continues to live, deliver on its strategic initiatives and its North American product lineup. That's a Goldman analyst. Um, Yeah, they don't have the full breakdown there, but nonetheless, big move, man. Ninety cents, yeah, right? Go for it, yeah. Four twenty-five. This that's yesterday's, right? They come up with numbers last night, though. Maybe? I believe so. There we go. There we go. So what do they got? So. Want me to do one more? Uh, no. Oh, here we, here we go. Look at that. So first quarter earnings per share, 44 cents. Consensus was 27. 27. Big number. Yeah. Um, year on year, they come in with um, adjusted earnings per, before interest and taxes, 2.4. Last year was 2.1. Not sure of the expectation. Um, maybe we do slide down one more. I guess see if we get... Uh, Let's see. So revenue, thirty-seven point two billion. Not bad. It's a good one. Not bad. They beat yeah. it by about two hundred million. Um, big number, probably that earnings, right? Yeah. Big beat for sure. Right to the bottom line. Yeah. Um, and especially when you beat on earnings and you beat on revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's not one of those. I know you were talking about on your show yesterday where somehow you're making more money right. when you're taking in less than we thought. Yeah. Okay, that's great, but that's not a recipe for uh, an Amazon of no. the world. You know, that's no. okay for this quarter, but everybody wants to know what you're doing next quarter. If you're taking in less money from revenue, man, you can't cut costs forever to make money. No, you so. can't. If we go back to Intel, too, and, you know, this thing is getting hit good, and let's just put this on a monthly. I see. So you, you failed at the high. You failed at uh, 57. So that puts game on to 42. Consolidation is going to stay in place. Quite a number, man. And look at the 42. Look at the volume stick out. This is this yeah. is crazy when this happens, folks. Okay, now you failed at the high, but at the low of the consolidation, you have volume. You can see it's sticking out like a sore thumb, man. It's just, we'll make sure. our way down to that level. Yeah. Uh, we're almost, well, we almost at the top of it. The top of that level is 49. The bottom is 42.36. And we can take a peek. We're about to go to break, but we'll take a peek. We got Google earnings on Monday, man. Oh, Things good. do not slow down at no, all. No, next week's a monster. <laughs> it week is too. a big week. Yeah. We'll go over a few different so things. So you get Google trading at 12.68.27 right now. It's 
close to a tie, and it's right next to it. They're going to be looking for 30 billion. 30 billion and okay. uh, 10 bucks to the bottom line. <laughs> 10 bucks to the Where's bottom Where's all their past earnings? What's I going know. on? Uh -huh. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down eight. NASDAQ is off 16. S&Ps are up three. Gold. Gold is continuing to catch a bid, up 970. And, uh, folks, if you uh, want to check out the gold report, real easy way to do it, just come over to the website of TFNN. Right in the newsletters, you can get it for a month, three months, uh, six months, a year. Great time. You can check out the report of the past, as in Mondays, and you got a new, fresh one, hot off the press, coming Monday morning, right? And we got some action here. And we speaking get... Monday, so I got it up here in terms of what we oh, got. Good. So we got Google coming out Monday. The Uber Roadshow is going to begin on Monday. Yeah. Uh, Boeing's got their annual shareholder meeting on Monday. That'll That's have some headlines, beauty. right? Tuesday, we're going to get earnings from GE, GM, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Merck, and Apple. Apple, right? Fed decision on Wednesday. Um, Bank of England decision Thursday, and then jobs report Friday, man. And window dressing all week. May Day, coming into May. Oh, that's right, May yeah, Day. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Gotta love it. Got it. Gotta love it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the bottom line, these S&Ps, they, they just want to stay flat. Uh, inside the, uh, let's go look inside the NDX. So, strength versus the weakness inside this NDX. You get the strength. Verisign is up 7%. Lines up 4 Intel is the big one. 
down nine. It went to its software, down seven. Always interesting on earnings, um, yeah. such divergence. Because Western Digital off uh, seven, yep. NVIDIA off five. Yeah. Intuit, let's see what Intuit, that's, a, that's quite a hit. Down 19 bucks. Yeah, it dropped it out sure of bed, is. too. It sure is. Yeah. Give it all back right into that February bar. Yeah. And, yeah, Ouch, off its eyes. Look at, nice chart, huh? Yeah. There's no doubt. You can't even see the pullback practically on that chart. Seriously. <laughs> That's, and I just put it up over 10 years. Right. Stay right there, folks. we get Fast Market coming up next. TD Ameritrade. I'm Mr. Basil Chapman. Steve Rhodes, Dave White. We'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wow! Go get him, folks.